For more than a century, riders have thrown themselves at the mercy of the Tour of Flanders. They've tested themselves against the roughest of cobbles, the steepest of climbs, and the most determined of opponents. 2019's edition of the Ronda promises to be no different. And as we prepare for its arrival on April the 7th, we take a look back on the races that went before, the races that made it the monument that it is today. It was a newspaper publicity stunt for 37 riders in 1913, but every edition since then has been recorded here at the Zentrum Ronde van Vlaanderen, and every piece has its story. In the 1930s, competitors had been sent out of the velodromes and onto the cobbles when floors were sold for wood in World War I. And legends of the sport began to join their ranks, lured by its slot just a week ahead of the already prominent Paris-Roubaix. The Tour of Flanders soon built its own legends. In 1943, Achille Busse became the first man to win the race three times. A year later, watch smuggler Rick van Steenbergen made his victory a historic one, becoming the youngest champion at 19 years of age. Into the 50s, the Belgian stranglehold on the Flemish race was loosening. Fiorenzo Magni proved the Italians could be just as at home on the Hellingen, equaling Busse's three-win record. After that, multiple Tour de France champion Louis Bobet became the first Frenchman to win as the climbs became an integral part of the Ronde route. In 1961, Tom Simpson turned the bad weather to his advantage. The Englishman powered across an unmarked line after the Finnish banner blew down, beating an unaware Nino de Filippis. In the late 60s, all expectation lay on local hero Eddie Merckx, but by his stratospheric standards, he never dominated his home classic. That's despite taking his first Ronde win with a 70-kilometer solo ride. It would be another six years before Merckx found glory at Flanders again. And by that time, a new legend had emerged. Eric Le Mans won three races in four years, his last welcomed by the crowds at Meerbeke, a town that would go on to host the finish on 37 more occasions. The Koppenberg would also become an icon of the race, its status confirmed in its first year when even Merckx had to dismount on its treacherous 22% incline. Koppenberg would continue to be decisive. Roger de Vlaeminck stole a controversial win from Freddie Mertens after the latter was disqualified for a bike change after the climb. There was a brief Dutch ascendancy in the Ronde into the 80s, Riders from the Netherlands recording five wins in eight years. But arguably the most testing Ronda yet came in 1985. In the wind and rain, only Phil Anderson and Jan Ras fought their way up the Koppenberg by bike. Of the 173 starters, only 24 made it to the finish line. The Paterberg's asphalt was dug up and replaced with cobbles for its inaugural race a year later. But on the cobbles of the Koppenberg in 1987, a tumble almost turned to tragedy. The race director's car narrowly missing rider Jesper Schibbe, an incident that banned the climb until a renovation in 2002. Despite Edvig van Hoydonk's two wins going into the 90s, the decade was dominated by one name. Johan Museo joined the list of all-time great one-day racers with eight podiums, including three wins in 11 starts. His efforts gained him the name the Lion of Flanders.
While Steen de Volder had his moments, the early part of this century has been about arguably two of the greatest ever classic specialists, Fabian Cancellara and Tom Bonin. Bonin won the Ronda an impressive three times and the Tour of Flanders Paris-Roubaix double twice, a feat also achieved by his fierce rival Cancellara. In more recent history, the Tour of Flanders has been anyone's race. So in 2019, will de Koenig Quickstep be able to maintain their dominance? Will Petter Sagan finally do the double on those punishing cobbles? Or will it be a new name carved into the history books.